Hey everyone, this is Ross, and we have a super harvest to show you guys today. This is a really diverse bunch of fruits, even some flowers there in the corner. We've got things like black currants, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, figs, gooseberries, nectarines, even a tomato in there somewhere. So um, we're going to be talking about all these different things, but the majority of what I want to talk about is the figs. These are Breba that are ripening right now because they are the best fruit by my standards out of all of these and it's quite a diverse little group here and to say that the fig is the best certainly means something so we'll talk about kind of why that is as we go it's a shame that i didn't get a chance to show you guys the harvest but we have to be inside right now because it's it's pouring and i couldn't get out here to get all these fruits to then pick them and then to also uh show you the harvest of me picking them at the same time it just it wasn't going to line up i'm running out of time i think the thunderstorms are coming in here probably any minute now in the next you know 30 minutes to an hour so uh just got to do what i got to do sorry i couldn't get that harvest on video for you guys but let's talk about some of these fruits because this is really impressive this is not something i get every day uh, at least in this quantity it just seems like certain days are better than others and how that kind of lines up it's very strange but also the rain coming in i want to pick all these fruits because a lot of these are going to be susceptible to damage like the fig itself um, raspberries as well the strawberries all the this really soft fleshed fruits will not do well in the rain. So it's really important to get out here and pick these every day. And I, if I did pick this stuff every day, I probably would have half of what I have right here um, every day this year, which is really awesome. So this is about a two or three day harvest in one, one little video for you guys. Because I am going away, because it is gonna rain the next couple days, not just right now, I wanted to make sure I get all this harvested now. And I can even freeze some of this stuff if I wanted to turn it into jam, process it in some way. I've been adding the, the black currants here to my kombucha. Um, I've been eating these gooseberries fresh. They're really, really tasty. They're way better than a lot of fruits. You gotta really give this fruit some credit. Um, but let's talk mainly about the fig trees and the figs themselves, because these are Breba. The Breba is not always as good as the main crop, but it can be if it ripens really well. And I have two of them here potentially three Breba that are ripened well. So let's open up the first one here, which I think is probably not gonna be, it's probably, it doesn't look like the best one I would imagine. But let me show you guys this. Let me turn the camera here and get this on video for you guys. You guys like that duck? <laughs> but let me cut this open. And then this way you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing as I'm seeing it. You can hear the rain now, potentially. All right, so this is not bad. This is a, a Breba here that I didn't think was going to be that ripe, but it's pretty soft. It looks pretty decent. I would say if I had a guess without really tasting it so far, I would say that's probably a two out of five, which is really not that great. But we have two here, one of which has already been pecked by the birds. So let's open this one up for you guys. Not always ideal when this situation happens, when a bird pecks it. It doesn't really happen, but the birds have been out of control this year. And this one, holy crap, this is going to be insanely good. This is a really tasty fig. Let me zoom in here and get a better shot of this. Can we get a better shot of this? Hmm. We're struggling here, guys. Look at that. Now that's something. This looks really tasty. This is a variety called Strawberry Verte. And you'll see when I compared this flavor to the other fruits, you'll see why it's king. And here's another one here that has really high potential to be very tasty. This one's probably the most ripe out of all of them. This one's called Sucret. And Sucret has that col de dame texture to it up oh, no it didn't really ripen all that well that's really a bit of a shame but 
Let me get you guys a decent view of this. I think it wants me further away. All right, so that's not horrible, right? But certainly not the potential of this fig. So realistically, the only one that probably is gonna compete with some of these other fruits here, when properly ripened though, a fig is really hard to beat. Here's a variety called St. Martin. Let's see what this guy looks like. Typical Breba where it's got that really weird color on the interior, definitely not ripe. This is a bit of a shame to be honest with you. I've had to come out here and pick these figs because they're just not ready. Every day they're on the tree, is a huge difference so anyway guys let me turn you guys back around and we can taste some of this stuff here talk about a lot of this and just show you guys kind of the differences and what all this really means um, the first thing i want to start out with is this strawberry verte because getting a really good shot of this it is so gooey and jammy in here that this is going to be a real treat for me so let's try this now. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap. And that's why figs, that's why the figs are the best thing on this, uh, this table right now. Um, this thing tastes like dates, melons, raisins, uh, you know, a dark berry flavor to it that's complex and interesting. It's also like jam. I don't know of any other fruit that you can eat and it's like literally eating jam. It's so soft, so gooey. It almost has the texture uh, on the exterior of a marshmallow. That's really good. That's probably for me though, only a three out of five in terms of, in terms of figs and how I rate them. That one's not even the best fig or among the best figs I've had. So there's a lot of potential there to grow even higher. Let's, let's taste the sucrete. Mm, it's actually good. This one's got a lot more honey flavors to it. Less berry intensity. You can tell by the interior how it's yellow or amber. It's gonna have more of an, uh, a honey-like flavor. Also very few seeds, few acnes in there. Gives it a really nice soft, gooey texture to it. Here we have Neruciola de Elba. Let's try that. Now I was told this fig's supposed to be bitter and sweet at the same time. I can kind of see that, but maybe that's a little bit of an unripe fig flavor. I'm not sure. But so far the uh, the strawberry verte, the first fig we had is the best by far. And there's St. Martin. Still not bad. I mean, even though these figs are underripe, except for the strawberry verte, they're actually pretty good, which is really surprising because an unripe fig really doesn't develop that flavor. I could pick something like a gooseberry here, which is actually a bit underripe. This is a red gooseberry called uh, Trixia. And it's supposed to turn a darker red color, but the interior turns a bit like a pear, like a grainy pear. It also gets a lot sweeter, but I like the tartness of them at this point, the crispness of them at this point. They're really good. In fact, This is one of my favorite fruits for sure. In fact, I like them, I think, more than the blueberry, which you can have right here is probably the perfect blueberry. It's huge. It's about the size of my thumb. It's approaching the size of a quarter. It's huge. It's great. I'm not gonna say it's not, but these gooseberries They've got something extra. They're a little sour, they're a little tart, they're sweet. 
I like the crispness of them. They're kind of like eating a grape. Now I also have here, which is something I've been wanting to show you guys again, which is the bush cherry. This is off a variety called uh, Juliet, which I believe is supposed to have the highest bricks for the most part of the bush cherry varieties that are available. I think there's one called Crimson Passion, which is slightly higher, but I don't have that variety yet. And I had complained about these, that they're just not that good. And some of you guys saw that video and said, all right, well, talk to us when it's dark purple, when it's a dark crimson color. This is certainly a dark purple. Here's a strawberry for a comparison. This is a very dark red strawberry. So this is definitely purple. And let me try this now because I didn't really like them like I said. So let's see if my opinion of them changes. Mm, that's good. That's actually almost as good as some of my Bing type cherries. In fact, it may even be better. So Carmine Jewel is the bush cherry that I had and that is just not good. Even when it's purple like that, it just wasn't good. So what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna forget about the Bing type cherries. We're gonna forget about Carmine Jewel and we're probably just gonna stick to Romeo and Juliet and maybe Crimson Passion and that's it. Everything else I think I'm gonna get rid of um, because that was way better and way easier to grow than my bush cherry or than my standard Bing type cherries that you normally see at the store. Here we have Mar de Bois strawberry which, by the way, does not stop producing. It literally just keeps going. It has an amazing flavor of bubblegum, a wild strawberry flavor. When it gets this dark red like this, it really brings out that flavor. They're also not a bad size uh, after they get some age to them. And they are so productive, it's insane. They produce like a June bear, as much as my early glow did which is strictly a June bear, they just keep going. They've given me like a, a month long break about, somewhere around that, maybe like a three week break. And now they're starting back up again and I have just a whole bowl here of strawberries. Um, the flavor is incredible. The firmness of the berry is incredible. This is just below that um, strawberry verte fig. This is just below that in my opinion. It'd be hard pressed to say which one was better. It really is. Um, so a three out of five on my scale of fig is probably competitive to what would be a perfectly ripened Mar de Bois strawberry, which I believe to be a nine out of 10 on my scale of fruits. So a fig is a 10 out of 10. This Mar de Bois strawberry and my persimmons, my alpine strawberries, those are nine out of tens. A well-ripened peach and a well-ripened apricot, or even a well-ripened nectarine is also a nine out of 10. In fact, let's try one of these now and see if we can get one that's a bit softer than the others. Some of these were getting attacked by different insects and they dig into the flesh, get inside the pit, and then they kind of make a home there and it's, not really the greatest thing um, to witness or to eat. So I picked some of these a bit early, but we can let them soften up on the counter. This is very good. This here is a white nectarine. I think this is the um, Arctic Glow, um, if I'm not mistaken. And this fruit is certainly very competitive with a really well ripened strawberry. But this thing's not, it's almost not there because it's not perfect. If you really let this ripen on the tree, let it soften up on the tree, uh, it's definitely gonna compete with this, with the strawberry, as well as compete with a really well ripened fig. So um, we also have in here more blueberries and there's a tomato somewhere at the bottom but I can't really get to that right now. Uh, let's try the raspberries and the currants. That's really the only thing left. Um, 
These black currants, believe it or not, are not really supposed to be eaten fresh, but if you let them soften up and turn fully black like this, they're actually quite good, even fresh. And here's the inside of what a black currant looks like. Very strange, but it's white on the inside. And it kind of reminds me of like a, what does that remind me of? Lots of seeds, almost like a piece of citrus. It's very strange, but they're not bad. In fact, they have a wild, wild flavor. I mean, this is probably the most interesting flavor out of anything on here. The only deal, the only issue is that you really gotta let them soften up. And they can get a, leer, a weird like Just a weird bitterness to them, which I think really makes them great in almost anything processed. So if you're processing them in a the jam, liqueurs, wine, whatever it is, this is gonna be incredible. It's gonna have such an interesting, weird flavor to it. And that's kind of what they're meant for. So for me, they're, they're only about a six out of 10. A five being something that you probably just don't wanna eat fresh, at least on a daily consistent basis. Uh, unless you had to, like something like a goji berry is really low on my uh, my rankings there. We have, um, in fact, only a notch higher, the gooseberry is only a notch higher at a seven out of 10. And so is the blueberry. Now, of course, I think the gooseberry, like I said, is a bit better, but I think the uh, they're both pretty much at a seven. It'd be hard for me to get them to an eight. Maybe the gooseberry is an eight. But here we have raspberries. And not only do we have raspberries, but we have yellow raspberries and we have red raspberries. And the yellows, I think I actually like more than the reds. There's different colors and all fruits, particular color relates to a certain flavor. Yeah. I mean, the yellow ones, very simply put, just have a less intense raspberry flavor. They're more sweet. Overall, I think they're less tart, more pleasurable on the palate, at least for me. And for that reason, I think they're slightly higher. More of a more refreshing flavor, not, uh, you know, not so tart, bites your tongue, you know, makes your eyes squint and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. And the raspberry here, I would say is somewhere around a seven out of 10 as well. And I put blackberries, mulberries, and probably the gooseberries at an eight out of 10, being my favorite berries. Um, and everything else is just slightly lower. So, Anyway, guys, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna enjoy this. I really wish I could have got you guys outside and shown you the harvest, but now everything's soaking wet out there. Um, the rain did stop, but I imagine it's gonna pick up again. We're gonna have more rain in the next couple of days. What is gonna happen with this is that we needed to get out here and pick all these fruits because some of them would have been horrible when I came back from my trip on the 4th of July. Um, some of these would have Certainly spoiled, certainly um, not been of the greatest quality. Uh, yeah, I could have left some of them on, like the, the nectarines as an example, but the insects, the birds, there's no telling what have gotten to these fruits, so better be safe than sorry, eat them while I can. Um, we're not gonna be away for that long, but I do wanna mention that we have a couple fig trees on FigBid right now. So for those of you guys who are interested in buying some trees, by the 4th of July, I am probably home by the time you guys are watching this, and I will be shipping out the trees once the auction ends on Sunday. So the auction is gonna end this Sunday, which is July 7th, I believe. So on FigBid, in the description of this video, you guys can see that link. Hopefully this video comes out before that point, but they're already listed now. It's gonna end on Sunday. If you wanna know when I'm selling trees, Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Again, all the links to that stuff is in the description. I let you guys know 
when I'm selling trees, because so many of you guys uh, ask me questions about that. Oh, we do have the nasturtium, by the way. And this is, again, a really interesting flower. Very sweet, believe it or not. It's also peppery, zesty. Um, for eating a flower, guys, <laughs> there's few flowers that are better. But if you think about it, the fig is actually an inverted flower. Anyway, guys, I suggest you grow all this stuff. This is a great little snack here. Great little breakfast. All of you guys would enjoy it. This is all what it's about. Growing fruit in your backyard. This is it. So, Thank you guys for watching this one. We'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Again, take care, everybody. Check out those trees on FigBid and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All right, guys. Catch you later.